Okay, so this equation, or this question, starts off with an equation, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. Never uh, skip over these equations if they're provided, because you'll always need to use them. So the question goes on to say, the equation above represents a parabola in the xy plane. Which of the following equivalent forms of the equation displays the x-intercepts? Right, so x-intercepts of the parabola as constants or coefficients. So here's the deal. Uh, first of all, the easiest way to solve this is to graph it on your graphing calculator. So you could literally just type this in, uh, the y equals, so you'll have y equals already on your graphing calculator. So you're just typing in the x squared minus 6x plus 8, and then your calculator will then graph that parabola, and you'll be able to see where um where those where those x intercepts are okay and then from that you'd be able to use that information and say well if the correct answer here has to display the x intercepts then there should only be one answer that actually has these x intercepts listed um, in the equation for the answer choice. Since I cannot show you my graphing calculator, what I will do instead is I am going to just find the x-intercepts of this original equation. Now, to find an x-intercept, all we do is, is we set y equal to zero. So that equation that we were given would become zero equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. The next step here is we would need to factor this trinomial. I always like to set up my parentheses first because I know that's what's going to happen. I like to put my x's in the first position of each parenthesis because I know that's how I get the x squared. And then to determine what goes in the second position really is all based upon the last term and the middle term, right, including the sign. So what you want to ask yourself is what are two numbers that multiply to equal positive 8, right, the last term, but when added together equal negative 6, the middle term? So in this case, that answer would be negative 2 and negative 4, because negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, and negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 6. Now let's not forget, this is still equal to 0. So as soon as I have binomials now equal to 0, I can set each one separately equal to 0, and this will give me my x-intercepts. So therefore, my x-intercepts are 2, right? Because I would add 2 to both sides. And I could add 4 to both sides here. So my other x-intercept is 4. So again, the question says that the answer should display the x-intercepts. So the only answer that I see that shows 2 and 4 is choice D. Now, you may be asking, well, but it has a, a negative 2 and a negative 4. Well, if you remember, this equation is actually the same thing that I had here, right? So the x-intercept actual values will always be the opposite sign of how you see them listed inside parentheses. So in this case, negative 2 and negative 4 become positive 2 and positive 4 because really of this process that I just showed you a minute ago where we set them each equal to 0. So, you know, I, there's no need to try any of these other things. There are other strategies here. I could also use plug in your own number. But if I were to, for instance, say x equals 2 and plug it into the equation and then plug that 2 into the answer choices to find which answer choice matched, I would bet that you'd find multiple answer choices that match the original question because uh, that just deals with those equations being equivalent. What we care about is that it's equivalent and that it displays the x-intercepts. Displaying the x-intercepts is a little bit harder to do than it is for two equations to be equivalent. So I went that route first um, from experience. So for you, my suggestion is if you ever see a question that gives you two criteria, one being equivalence and the other being that it displays x-intercepts or displays a y-intercept. I've also seen questions that say, uh, displays the um, the ordered pair for the vertex, right? It's always better to go for the display. And again, we would have been done in 30 seconds if we used the graph. So I know it's a long video, but if you just throw this into your graphing calculator, you would have seen that the x-intercepts were at 2 and at 4, and you're immediately to the right answer.